There is no Dana, only Zool. I am Lance Ash, the inner, the inner voice of choice, and this is bad business. I'm recording this a little off our usual routine. I forgot to bring the recorder to work last night. So, I'm recording this after having gotten home and taken a nap. And I'm heading back out again to do some errands. It's very cold. It's 25 degrees. And, um... not fun Ugh, made it through the week Christmas is coming in two days perhaps Santa will pull off a Christmas miracle there's some speculation that the Prius can't handle very cold temperatures. My wife thinks that by uh, opening or turning the car on every couple of hours throughout the night will help it stay warm and crank in the morning. I don't think that that's really going to do much. Oh, there's a Herschel uh, political sign still up. Isn't that weird? Ooh, ice on the road. My car just slipped. That's weird. Well, I've been listening to Depeche Mode lately. Their album, Violator, is just fantastic. Ultra's a pretty good record, too. Songs of Faith and Devotion is not that good. Um, I've also got music for the masses, uh, not with me, but um, I never have really had a chance to dig into it very much. Policy of Truth from Violator is such a true song. The lyrics are so true. I've been practicing and rehearsing all week for this episode and now I can't remember anything I was going to say. I listened to um, Fleetwood Mac's Tango in the Night record also this week. There are people who totally dismiss Fleetwood Mac's output uh, after Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks joined the band because they became, and they were a pop group before that when Bob Welch was the main songwriter in the band. but. These people are blues purists who get a little sn snippy when they consider that um, Fleetwood Mac turned into a pop band, which they did. It's, you, you have to consider it as two separate bands. This Fleetwood Mac, the the blues rock band, and then this Fleetwood Mac, the pop band. Tango in the Night is a great record. I realized that I really haven't explored the less well-known songs on that record.
You hear the wind? The wind is really bad. It's a bad day. Bad, it's going to be a bad night. I don't think I should worry so much about dead air on the show. Many years ago, we had, no, not many years ago, maybe say three years ago, four years ago, we had a couple of days of really cold weather and my wife and I went driving around out in the countryside and we saw several dead horses in a field. They couldn't take the cold overnight. You'd think that the people who owned the horses on the field would round them up, knowing it's gonna get down to 10 degrees. What's the poor horse gonna do? I'm rereading The Wrong Side of Goodbye. I think that's the name of it. It's a Harry Bosch novel by Michael Connolly. I read it in German about a week ago, and now I'm rereading it in the original English. This old man is searching for this girl he got pregnant 50 years before. Six, set. Yeah, 70 years before. And um, he's wondering if whatever happened to her, whatever happened to the baby, because he's a, he's a billionaire and he wants to leave his money to um, his heir if he can find him. So um, in the course of talking to Bosch, he says something was the second worst thing that ever happened to me. The first worst thing that happened to me was this. And I was wondering, what's the worst thing that ever happened to me? I can't think. I guess five years ago, waking up and finding out that I'd had emergency skull surgery that's pretty bad but there was no that was something that happened without my knowledge and I woke up afterwards to it with gradual awareness I can't I'm trying to think of something that happened with full consciousness I guess the night that I got busted for shoplifting this would have been November of 87. That was pretty bad. I wonder what else happened. Oh, lots of stuff. But looking back, you know, I don't have anything that weighs on my mind after all this time. Hmm. Oh, warm air is coming out of the vent now. I suppose the car cranked. Now we're up to 24 degrees. What did I say it was earlier? 20? I haven't had it be this cold in the middle of the day in a long time. Several years ago in Athens, when I worked in Athens at night, I remember it being 16 degrees at night. When you get to be my age, you have such a collection of people in your mind that you used to know. It's very strange. 
and you wonder what happened to them. You wonder if they would remember you. A bunch of people that you don't remember, and I bet you they do remember you. People we used to be friends with, used to hang out with. A bunch of people whose relationships with you were based on alcohol. There's an episode of Seinfeld where Jerry and Elaine are debating what percentage of the human population is attractive. And she thinks it's pretty high, and he thinks it's pretty low. And she asks, well, if, it's, if there's so few attractive people, then how are all these people getting together? And he says, alcohol? Very true. Mm. The wind is blowing the car all over the place. I really hate this. I really, really hate this. I hate that I forgot the damn recorder. You never know. changing things. Come on, lady. Cross the thing. Oh, my God. People who have no hope still make the effort to look attractive. Look presentable. Look pretty. Mmm. I wonder at what age you finally just give up. When I was a kid, our little town had a very high percentage of old people. A lot of them went to that church. When I was a kid, there was only one church in town, a little Baptist church. There were so many old people. And I don't know what effect that had on my mind. A lot of them were these old ladies. A lot of them were old ladies. And they were the kind of old ladies that never said anything. They were just defeated and scared. And they just sat around with staring. I was thinking about um, I don't know what brought this up. Oh, Okay, in 1966, Ron Eli starred in a television show called Tarzan. And I was trying to find a certain episode because there was a bad guy who was a Chinese midget. And he had this big muscle guy that would carry him around. And he would sit in the muscle guy's arms like it was a chair. And anyway, so I'm looking up through the episodes and I can't find it but it was, I was reminded it used to come on every day in syndication at a certain time my grandmother who lived across the street would babysit my cousin and um, so I would walk over there to visit every so often so we could hang out play I think it's the better word because we're that little so I go over there and I'm like well where's Jason and my grandmother goes he got mad because he wanted to watch Tarzan. He watches Tarzan at, you know, like 10 in the morning, whatever, every day. And they took it off so they could show this or some special thing. And she was, wasn't that a dirty trick to play, play it on a little boy? 
and I thought about that. My my grandmother was she was so sweet. She was always on the kid's side. I was going through the um, the list of episodes, and I remembered a good many of them. The one where Tarzan is swimming, and somebody throws a grenade in the water, and he goes deaf temporarily. He uses his telepathic powers to communicate with the animals to get justice brought to the villains. They've tried and they've tried, but they've never made a proper adaptation of Tarzan. Just can't do it. In the original books, there's a good deal of what we would today call racism. What back then they would probably call racialism. And they just can't, they can't put that in a movie today or TV show <laughs> and also whenever they do a Tarzan movie today they have to do the origin story start all over with the origin Nobody ever thinks, well, you know, we're doing a Tarzan movie. We haven't done a Tarzan movie in 20 years, 15 years. You know, why don't we just jump in? Tarzan's already grown. He's already established himself. In the books, Tarzan becomes a, a grandfather. And I think even the great grandfather. There's a recurring element in a lot of Burroughs' work of immortality. And in the books, Tarzan achieves immortality. Just like in the John Carter books, um, something like that. I can't remember. They'll, ne they'll never do a proper Conan movie either. Because again, you got the origin story and all that shit. Plus a lot of the Conan stuff are short stories. And to be... Uh, I don't know. There have been rumors for a couple of years now that we're going to bring Schwarzenegger back to do King Conan. But, you know, I mean, if they're going to do it when he's after he's already become king, yeah, it might work. But um, to show how he became king, he's, he's far too old for that. You know, they're doing, they got this new Indiana Jones movie coming out. <laughs> And I think it's hilarious that Shia LaBeouf is not in it. He was riding high. His career was on a non-stoppable rocket ride to the top. He's so much so that he's been chosen to become Indiana Jones' heir. And then it evaporated the whole thing gone you look at somebody like uh, Robert Downey Jr he was hot and then he got this bad drug addiction problem nobody f remembers when he broke into that little boy's room and slept in his bed um, 
But somehow he pulled himself through and now he's a bigger star than ever. Some people can do it and some people can't. I guess it helps that Robert Downey Jr. is good looking and Shia LaBeouf is no nowhere near good looking. So he I Shia LaBeouf has charisma and an intuitive understanding of what is required. But I, I, I shudder to think how bad this new Indiana Jones movie is going to be. I went to see Crystal Skull at the theater, which is a rare thing for me. And it was a pile of shit. I think bringing Karen Allen back was a mistake. Certainly the way they did it was a mistake. Why is this man turning in at this place here? Disrupting the flow of traffic for a thousand people so he can turn, it to, turn in at the bagel company. Oh, it's a young girl. Oh, okay, well, I see. Seth Meyers made a joke the other night about your grandfather. Um, talking about some old western talking about the good points it's all in it's in black and white and there are no women in it and it's so true I've said it for years women ruin movies when you're having a nice adventure movie action adventure movie you don't want a woman in there Red is the Lost Ark is an exception because it worked. Look at the early Bond films. The women were there just as window dressing. They didn't try to participate. It's a bleak day. They still haven't torn down the old varsity building yet. Big mistake that was. A distinctive piece of architecture. A beloved restaurant. Gone. For greed. This historic corner property. It'll be gone soon. They'll put up some generic thing, lube joint, in and out burger. Some crap nobody cares about. Hmm. I've got one more painting to do for the year. I'm trying to get it done this weekend. I got a lot accomplished this year. Got one more episode for the year though. So I'll see what I can tell you next week.